Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This video is going to be an introduction to probability and statistics. It's part of a bigger course, Foundations of Math. This is chapter nine. Uh, there's going to be quite a few chapters in here to get your basic math skills up so you do really well on any standardized math exam. Whether it's the ASVAB, the military placement exam, a union entry exam, a contractor's exam, standardized math tests are all pretty much the same. A little bit of review, a little bit of practice will bring a lot of pieces together so you could do the very best you can on them. This chapter is chapter nine, probability and statistics. In this video, I'm gonna go over what probability is, what the mean, median, mode are, what a frequency distribution is, and what a histogram is. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started on what probability is. The probability of any event always has to be between zero and one. It is the likelihood of that thing happening. So if I'm playing cards, if I have a deck of 52 cards, what's probably I get the king of spades? Well, there's only one king of spades out of the sample space of 52. So the probability of drawing randomly a king of spades is one out of 52. The math notation for that would be the probability of any event is equal to the number in the event divided by the number in the sample space. Staying with the deck of cards, what's the probability that I draw a jack? Well, I gotta think about how many jacks are there. There are four out of the total 52, or four out of 52. I could reduce that fraction out of one out of 13, or I could convert it to a decimal or a percent. Um, they're all gonna be the same, and I cover fractions, percents, and decimal in previous chapters. Again, everything linked in the description. So that's what probability is. If I flip a coin, what's the probability of getting ahead? Well, a head is an event, so there's only one out of the possible two, so it's 50%. What's probably of flipping a coin and then flipping it again and then getting heads and then heads? What's well, going to be one half and then one half, so it's going to be one quarter. Another way to look at that is to look at all the outcomes of flipping that coin twice. I could either have heads, heads. I could have heads, tails. I could have tails, heads, or tails, tails. What's probably of getting heads and then heads? Well, that's going to be that one. It's going to be one of the four outcomes. So the probability of getting heads and then heads is one out of four. Okay, let's do one example problem. Pause the video here, try this problem on your own, and then uh, watch how I do it. So what I like to do is write out all the possibilities. There are 20 red marbles, so red is 20. There are 30 yellow marbles, 15 blue marbles, and 10 green marbles. The total is 50, 65, 75, so that's my total number of marbles. What is the probability of pulling out a green marble? Well, it's this one right here. The number in the event is 10, out of the sample space is 75. Five will go into 10 twice, five will go into 75 15 times. There's my reduced fraction. I could convert it to a decimal or a percent, but that's my answer. Part B, what's the probability of pulling a blue or a green marble? So now it's this or this. So the number in the event is the total, 25 out of 75. And again, I can reduce that fraction. 25 goes into there one time, into there three times, or one-third. So my answer is one-third. I could convert that to a decimal, 0.33, or I can convert that to a percent, 33.3%. So that's probability. If it gets a little more complicated, you always want to break it down to the number in the event over the number in the sample space. All probabilities have to be between 0 and 1, inclusive of 0 and 1. The word and always means to multiply. The word or means to add, like I added the 15 and the 10 here, versus the coins at the beginning. I, I wanted a head and then a head, so that's why I multiplied the 1 half times 1 half to get 1 fourth. All right, let's move on to statistics now. Statistics is just a branch of mathematics that helps organize data and analyze it, that data, and it allows you to make some inferences on larger populations by looking. The three big words in statistics are the mean, the median, and the mode. The mean is the average, sometimes represented with an X bar in math. The median is the middle number, just like the median on the freeway is in the middle of the freeway. The median is the middle number, and then the mode is the one that appears most frequently. Let's say I have a list of nine test scores right here. First thing I want to do is I want to put them in numeric order. So I have the 68. Next largest one is a 70. Next after that is a 72. And I have three of those, so one, two, 
three, and then 95. Okay, after I have all of these scores in numeric order, the first thing I'm going to do is find the average. That is the sum of all the values. So I add all nine of these values up. That adds up to 701. Then I divide it by the number of values, usually represented with the letter N. N is equal to 9, so there are 9 values. 701 divided by 9 is 77.9, and that's my average score. The next thing I want to find is a median. The median is the middle number. So if there are nine values, I want to find the fifth value. So this is my first, second, third, fourth, fifth value. So my median is 72, because I could see there's six, seven, eight, nine, four values after that, and four values before that. So instead of having an odd number of values, if I did have um, 10 values, then I'd take the middle two and average those to get my median. After I have my mean, my median, my third is the mode, the one that happens most frequently. Well, there are three values of 72, two values of 86. So the mode is 72 because there are more values. If a set of data has, say, three values of 72 and three values of 86, it can be called bimodal, meaning that there are two modes. But in this case, the way you'd write it out is the average X bar is 77.9. The median is that middle number. The median in this case is 72. And then the mode is also 72. All right, next, let's go ahead and look at a frequency distribution. I use the same set of data. Um, what a frequency distribution is, is X is going to be the actual value. So like the value of 68. And Y is how often it occurs. I only have one value of 68, and that's what a frequency distribution is. So if you've got a lot of repeat values, it really helps organize it and sets it up in a ta table. So let's go ahead and create a table out of a set of data. I have one value of 68. The next value in order is 70. There's only one value of 70. Then the next is 72. One, two, three. So 72 is my value, and there are three values of 72. Next value is 80. There's only one value of 80. Next value is 86. There are two values of 86. And lastly, my 95. And there's only one value of 95. I could double check that by adding up the number of values I have, 1, 2, 5, 6, 8, 9. And again, n is equal to 9, meaning there are 9 values, so I have them all represented. So again, that's what a frequency distribution is, where x is the value and y is how often it occurs. A histogram is you're just actually graphing that table where your horizontal axis is going to be x, the actual value. So 68, it's really just a bar graph. y is frequency or how often that occurs. So of the values of 68, there is only one value of 68. There's no values of 69. Of 70, there are one value of 70. 72. It would be better to actually put in the zero values for 69, 71, 73. And then 95, there's one value. So that's your histogram right there. That should give you the idea of what it looks like. If it starts to approach a bell curve like that, then it's considered a normal distribution. And we'll put that off for a different video. Okay, so pause the video, do this problem before I do it. Bob had four test scores. They were these four values here, find the average. I'm going to add all four of those values up. So 78 plus 86, 90, and 75. 8 and 6 is 14, plus 5 is 19, carry the 1. 7 and 1 is 8, and 8 is 16, 16 and 9. 25, 25, 32. So the total values, the sum of all the values is 329. And there are four test scores. So four into 329, it's going to be eight. That'll give me 32, zero, and nine. Uh, it doesn't go in the nine evenly. It's going to go in there twice. Give me eight, one left over. So it's 82 with a remainder of one. So 82 and a quarter is my average score. Okay, one more problem here. Again, do the video, uh, do the problem before I do it. And let's see, let's create a frequency distribution of these 20 incoming freshmen. So let's find the lowest score. It looks like 68 is the lowest. One, two, three. So 68 
is my x value. There are three of those. I did notice that there's a 65 there, so there's one value of a 65. And after that, our next lowest score is 70. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six scores of 70. And there's only one score, 76. So I think I got them all. Okay, I've created my frequency distribution where X is the number of values. Y is how often it occurs. I add all these up to see that it adds up to 20, which is the total number of heights I have. Create my histogram where X is the actual value, so 65, and there's one value of that. Y is how often it occurs. So I create the histogram with all those values there. I need to find the mean, the median, and the mode. Well, a mode will be the easiest one because there are six values of 70. The mode is going to be 70 because that one occurs the most frequently. Okay, to find the mean, I'm going to add all these values up. Don't forget there are 20 values. You could do 65 times 1 plus 68 times 3 plus 70 times 6. I add all those 20 values up and get 1,420. I did have my calculator. Save a little bit of time, not waste your time. 1420 divided by 20 gives me a mean represent with x bar equal to 71. And then the median, the middle number is going to be, there are 20 values, it is going to be both the 10th and the 11th value, right? Because there are even number of values. So I got to find the 10th and the 11th value. This is my first value. This is my um, second through fourth value. This is my fifth through 10th value. This is my 11th value. So my median is actually going to be the middle of these two. So my median is going to be 70.5. So that's my middle value. Okay, well that's an overview, a quick, very quick introduction to probability and statistics. I hope it helps. Um, again, this is one chapter in a Foundations of Math course. If you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments. Instead of a chapter next week, what we're going to do is I'm going to find like a sample ASVAB arithmetic reasoning test, and we'll use that as a midterm for this course. So stay tuned for that next week. I'll probably break it up into two videos, but we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing.